Hi. Turn your phone off. Hello. We love you. should say how many people are connected <laughs> hi Libby can you listen to me properly I just wanted to check before because this is the first time ever that I am hosting a live event so I just wanted to check in advance that I was going to be able to be do so Let's see, we're going to wait some minutes until more people join and we can start with the live. We still have some minutes, so, but I'm going to stay here. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we're going to be waiting then for um, five minutes. Uh, so that more people can uh, join. Oh, <laughs> you're going to see how, Rolando, you're going to see how easy it is to make tortillas. <laughs> Thank you for joining. I have my husband here who's going to be helping in case that something goes wrong because I uh, love cooking and I can do that but technology is not my thing so uh, he's going to be here helping me today <laughs> yeah I can do technology <laughs> cooking is not my thing so well So would you like to ask me some questions now in advance to check what you have in your pantries? Because then I'm going to be sharing what I have in my pantry. I mean, I have lots of things in my pantry, as you can imagine, but I'm going to be trying to tell you what I've been making with them and little substitutions that I do to make um, meals a little bit more creative. Hopefully that will help you. But if you have any questions or like if you have anything that you would like me to try to help you or share of um, what would you like to do, um, that would be great if you can leave your uh, questions here so that then um, when I finish making the tortillas, um, I can start talking a little bit about my pantry and hopefully then you can tell me what you have in your pantry and I can try to, to help you. So anything that you leave here, uh, also my husband is going to be trying to help me uh, checking on everything that, uh... <laughs> I have a lot of rice too. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, I have an Alin. Um, um, I can see myself, um, um, someone is saying, Rolando is saying that this uh, is frozen, can you see me? Oh, okay, I'm going to, okay, we're going to talk about that, the frozen zucchini, <sighs> okay. So let's see what time is it. Do you, are you okay? For it's two o one. Um, if we wait another um, three minutes, four minutes, so that more people can join and we can talk about um, your questions. But I'm going to be writing and trying to remember uh, all your questions with the zucchini. You know what happens with the zucchini um, when it's frozen. Um, Zucchini, like potatoes, it's a, 
it's a veggie that has lots of water. So unfortunately, it's hard for it not to become mushy when you are cooking it if it was frozen. What you can do is before adding uh, the other ingredients to let it release the water and the liquid before when you're cooking it. And another thing, if you're going to be making a little sauce or anything with the with the zucchini is that you can add a little bit of um, cornstarch, for example, if you want it to become a little bit more um, to have more like a consistency of a little sauce, but not watery. But then what you can do is that if you have a spiralizer, I know it can be hard, but it's so easy to make them on your own. And with only one zucchini, you're going to be able to make like an amount of uh, zucchini spirals that it's much bigger from what you get in the box. But uh, what I would do is to let it release the liquid before you put the rest of, of the ingredients. And if you only want to use uh, one pan, you do it that in advance, then you remove the, the zucchinis. When they released all the water, you start adding the rest of the ingredients that you want to cook with the, um, with the zucchini noodles, and then you add them back um, to the same pan. So you're not using two pans. Um, I don't know, Michelle, if that helps you with your uh, question about the zucchini, but definitely uh, making them with the spiralizer that I have one that I never use <laughs> because I end up making like uh, pasta uh, with um, uh, flour, uh, but definitely making them on your own. Uh, it's something that I would really try, especially right now. I mean, that we have more time probably to cook but, um, oh, the frozen veggies <laughs> to taste better. Yes, that is one thing. In my opinion, the, the veggies um, that are frozen, there are one thing. What I like to do when I buy frozen veggies is um, to buy them separately, you know? In my experience, buying bags of veggies that are frozen, that come in a mix, most of the times when I put them to cook, they don't taste the same or they don't have the same texture as when I buy peas, corn, broccoli. I mean, the bags separately. I know that sometimes that can be hard because it depends on the space that you have in your fridge. But uh, honestly, I believe that that really changes the consistency of the veggies. I, for me, one of my staples is um, having peas on my freezer. I have corn. My son loves corn. Uh, then I also have those peppers that come, the frozen peppers and um, from Trader Joe's that if some of you have been to my classes, you know that I'm a fan of them and I'm always like trying to use them for many of the things that I do. But um, in my experience, uh, having them separately really helps with the taste of the frozen veggies. When you buy those blends, um, it can be harder. But if you're buying those blends and you want those veggies to taste better, what I would do is in advance, um, I would remove the veggies that I'm going to be making frozen and I would put them in a, a strainer, on a strainer and leave them there for some minutes, okay? And probably, um, personally, what I would do is like with water in that strainer, I would add a little bit of water to it so that they start, um, becoming, you know, uh, alive a little bit and they're going to start draining some of the water. And there is when I would add them to the pan to cook. Um, oh, my favorite stew recipe, you're asking me, uh, what is my favorite stew recipe with frozen veggies? Uh, well, I make tons of soups. So for me, like soups, stews, that is something that I make a lot. Uh, if you ask me for uh, recipes with frozen veggies and soups, um, what I like making is like the typical uh, Toscan soups where you can add everything that you have. But the most important thing when you add any, to me, any frozen veggie 
to a soup is the starter, okay? Like uh, building different flavors. Uh, any frozen veggie or any veggie is going to taste better if at the beginning to any pot that you use, uh, you add a little bit of pancetta or bacon, whatever you have, or if you have any smoked ham or anything, uh, that really helps at the beginning to add more flavors to everything that you're making, especially a soup. So I try to do that. Then I add a little bit of um, onions, for example, and I start building a base. If you have pesto or tomato paste, for example, you add a little bit of that to that base and then um, I add the frozen veggies that I have and beans, for example. And in the end, uh, well, also using a good um, vegetable broth or any broth that you have, it's always very good. And another thing uh, that I do sometimes is that when I'm using veggies at home, like not frozen veggies, but let's say leeks, uh, whatever I have, I have a big bag um, with uh, um, in a Ziploc and I start putting all this, the scraps and all the veggies there. And that when I'm making like a broth and you put water, okay, not, not even water, you put a pot, you put all those scraps that you have over there with a little bit of bacon. If you have one full like onion that it's getting horrible, you throw it there and then you add water, cold water, and then you can make a broth from that. And you let it be, I mean, you let it there and you can make a very good vegetable broth. So that is, those are things that really add flavor to any veggies. But if you're using uh, frozen veggies, in my opinion, uh, when I add the beans, if I'm using, uh, okay, if I'm using canned uh, beans, I use, I, if I'm using the, the instant pot, I, another thing that I love making is chili, for example, with, with veggies, for ex any, any veggie that you have, you know, the only thing with the chili is that then you add a tomato, or a, a can of tomatoes, for example, to that. But uh, with the beans, if I'm making soup and I'm using um, canned, tomato, canned um, uh, beans, I add them at the end. I mean, because what I like with soups, and to me, in my opinion, what makes a good flavor for a soup, it's to let it cook for a long time. Um, so that is going to allow for all the veggies to release all the flavors and blend together. So when you do any stew or, or anything, or you use the, the instant pot, for example, that really helps to put all that together because of the humidity that you get inside the pot. Or if you are using a cast iron uh, pot that I love using, um, there you let the uh, stew or the soup cook for a while and you're going to see that the liquid needs to be uh, reduced. And then you can add more liquid if we want, but that base is going to add a lot of flavor to any soups. And you know that soups, you can leave it for a long time in the refrigerator for at least five days. And you can add more water and things like if you have chicken leftovers or if you have any uh, leftovers, you can add them to your soup, rice, for example, or quinoa or barley. You can always add those things to the soups. Um, I love the idea of making my own veggie stuff. How much salt should I add or should I add salt? Well, that is to uh, your taste. What I like adding when I make stock is uh, at the beginning, I like to add kosher salt. So um, that is going to add a lot of flavor at the beginning and then I don't add any more because when all the veggies uh, blend together and they build this flavor and you let it cook, you're going to see how salty it begins. And also if you added the pancetta at the beginning or the bacon, that it's already salty, okay? So, okay. Um, so that is going to help and it's better to add less and then after cooking for a while you see how they taste but i don't like adding a lot of salt to i prefer the herbs that you're asking me that sounds so good do you think right or um okay um i use a lot of uh, dry 
herbs and I love them. In fact, when I buy these boxes of herbs that you find in the supermarkets, I let them dry in my refrigerator in a Ziploc bag and I keep them there and you can keep those in the fridge and they're going to become dry and you can use them. And I love the flavor of them. To me, uh, it's different. I mean, if you're making um, a dish with chicken or and you have the fresh herbs herbs it's amazing but for soups i think that dried herbs are um, are very good having said that the quality of those herbs are important i try to buy herbs like dry herbs when i go to international markets now it might not be the time but I always say that when I go to the international markets and you have all those aisles from Greek, for example, that I believe that Greek, uh, Italy, they have great sun to dry uh, those um, herbs that they already have an amazing taste and flavor from uh, the Tuscan region or the Mediterranean. I love uh, dried herbs from there. And if you go to Mariano's, you're also going to find those herbs in the international um, aisle. And you're going to see that you can have bay leaves. They sell um, like oregano from um, Greece. So I love those that, that sort of herbs because to me, those uh, taste really good. My sister's make she keeps beets and pieces of veggies in silver wax in the freezer until she has enough. Exactly, yes, that's what I was saying. I was saying, Leslie, that I do the same. Sometimes when I remember, um, I try to put all the leftovers that I have from any veggies, veggies that I cut, and then you make a very good broth. Another thing that you can make if you, I mean, if you then you have a lot of energy and you want to do it, is that you can make your own stock cubes, which there you need much more salt because they are salty. But there are a lot of recipes in YouTube if you want to try to do that. Um, there are tons of recipes. I don't buy uh, stock uh, cubes. Uh, I prefer making my stock. In fact, when I make a soup, just for you to know, and I let it cook, as I told you, for a long time, you actually don't even need to add any vegetable stock or anything because you're already making the stock. Because I feel like here we are used to add stock to everything. But when you're using already veggies and you're making that flavor base, you really don't need to add any stock uh, that in when you see the, the ingredients, some of them has a lot of yeast, they have a lot of salt. I mean, you can definitely do that by adding like these things that I told you, like a little bit of bacon or a little bit of tomato, a paste, um, pesto, for example. I mean, I always make pesto and the pesto really helps with... Um, with building flavors when I make in soup, for example, if I make soup, I always have pesto and pesto in the refrigerator. You can have it for, for some weeks. Uh, I do that and I use a lot of garlic too. So at the beginning, I use those things. Even if you don't have pesto and you have like dry basil, for example, you can make those bases. And with that, you're not going to even need to add vegetable stock um, to those, um, to, to, be, to um, soup. So um, would you like me to start making the tortillas? Um, I have to say tortillas because that's how we pronounce it in Argentina, where I'm from. The double L, we pronounce it ya. But um, what I'm going to do is I can go and show you how um, easy um, you can make at home tortillas. And these only have like four ingredients. And to me, uh, once you start making them and literally from the time you make them, uh, you make the dough until you cook them, it's literally 15, 20 minutes. So this doesn't take that much. And what I'm going to be doing is like, I'm going to show you how to make them. And then I am going to post in my Instagram, which is Taste of Real Food, uh, the recipe for you to make them at home. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is like I'm going to turn my computer, okay, because I have everything ready here um, to show you how to make um, the tortillas. And let me see here if I have a light. Let me see 
how hopefully you can see me um, making them, okay? Can you listen to me? Is that okay? Um, okay, so um, this is how I make tortillas. I have here, um, I'm going to cook them here. I have everything that I take to my cooking classes. <laughs> So um, this is so, so easy. My husband is helping me here. Okay, thank you, perfect. So um, this is what I do, okay? So this is very, very easy. With this, you're going to be able to make approximately, depending on the size that you like, like a medium, smaller size tortilla, approximately like eight, okay? Eight, nine, it depends, okay? So. This is like all purple flour, flour. So I have one cup, okay? And then I add a little bit of salt. This is to your taste, okay? Um, one teaspoon of uh, baking powder. And now I'm going to move all around the salt to mix well with the flour so I, that it's all around. So then I have, this is a hundred millimeters of um, water, okay? This is room temperature water. And I throw them here with approximately one tablespoon of um, olive oil, but you can use any oil, okay? And I'm going to turn this on because um, this is my pan that I'm going to be using today. So now we mix this. And what you have to do when you have the dough ready, that literally it's just putting everything together here. And I'm going to show you how I mix this and don't be scared because at the beginning you're going to think that this is a little dry but always remember that before adding more water or liquid to um, anything that you're making with flour you have to be uh, careful because flour absorbs the liquid so when it's absorbing the liquid uh, it takes a little bit for it to absorb. That is why uh, you need to uh, knead. And after that, if you realize that this is um, too dry, it's when you add a little bit of more liquid. But wait, because uh, at the beginning you can think like, oh, this is too dry, and you start adding more and more liquid and then um, the flour, uh, it, it stops absorbing the water, okay? The more you move this, the more, look, here is what you're going to do or what I do to make the dough, okay? So I move it like this. And you see now how um, humid it is, and at the beginning it was super dry. So believe me that this is a recipe that really works and it's going to work for you to make this. So once you have this, just like this, okay? And I move a little bit more, and this is how I like stretching the dough, like making this movement. And once I have it like this, what you do is like you're going to be covering it for five minutes, okay? And always cover this, because you know that this is a dough that tends to become dry if you don't cover it. So we are going to cover it for five minutes with anything that you have. I have a towel here, but you can use like uh, food wrap, whatever you have. And when it's done, you are going to cut um, little pieces, okay? And by little pieces, I have some here already that I cut and you cut them. And what I like using, which is, this is another staple in my house. This is a weight. And what I try to do when I make pizzas or when I make these sort of things is like to wait um, the dough and see how many I'm going to be making so that then they look similar. But I mean, that is if you want. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. So what you do is like you wait five minutes, then you make 
a little balls with this and wait for another five minutes with this cover. And then you start making the tortillas. And what you have to do is that you need to have here, I have a pan. The pan needs to be super, super hot and you don't need to add any oil. You don't have to add absolutely anything to the pan. You can use any pan. I'm here using a non-stick pan that I have, that I love. But of course, um, any other pan that you have, it's going to work for this, okay? So what I do now is that, sorry, I want you to see, I'm going to start uh, giving a little bit of shape to this. I make this in the morning, okay, because I was, um, I wanted to have this in advance for you so that you didn't have to wait for them to be ready. So what I do is like I use a little bit of flour to help me and I give a little bit of um, shape. And another thing that you have to do, like I would do, is like as, as soon as they're getting ready, because these are going to be ready super fast, is that you want to have a plastic bag or to have a, a plate where you can put these uh, ready and cover them so that they don't dry, okay? And, and that is kind of like uh, the little secret for these to look like the ones that you buy. Well, these are going to be much better than the ones you buy in any store, that is for sure. And of course you can keep these in the refrigerator or you can frozen them if they last. But um, that's what you can do. And another thing that you can do if you want is like you can make the dough and you can add some uh, seeds to the dough. For example, if you, you can use whole wheat. And for whole wheat, I would use a little bit more of uh, water in this case. Um, you can add a little bit of um, ghee or butter when you finish this. Uh, onion powder, garlic powder, um, thyme, anything that you like, okay? So now, um, this needs to be super, super hot, as I told you. So I'm going to make um, one for you to see how easy here is. And this is hopefully going to be done super fast. Um, you can make them, um, for example, as I'm tonight, um, I'm going to make empanadas. I am not going to be using this, but tomorrow, for example, what I'm going to be doing is like when this craziness started, um, I don't know why, well, I went to one of these international supermarkets and I got ground lamb, I know. Uh, but you can use ground beef if you want. So tomorrow I'm going to make like this sort of like kaftas. Like they are typical from uh, Middle East food. And I'm going to be making that with a little sauce with um, yogurt or like um, sour cream, um, some onions. I can do like pickled onions and um, then we're going to be having that um, so here as you see uh, look they are going to be the first one is always the worst I always say the same for any everything you do especially if you're making like these crepes or anything but um, once this start being more hot, these are done super fast. So you're going to see that there is air and it pops up. And this is to your taste if you want them to become a little like, um, I don't like them to be um, overcooked because if you cook them too much, then they are not going to stay um, humid okay so what I do is like when I start seeing you see the little air it's you see this comes up this is when I put them 
here and I cover them. And then here I'm going to do another one for you to see how fast you can make them. And um, this is it. I mean, what I'm going to be doing tonight or when I finish this is that I'm going to be sharing all, all the recipes to make these uh, tortillas. And also I'm going to give you some options, as I told you, for you to know that you can make this with whole wheat. You can make this using um, adding like seeds um, to the mixture. Um, again, you can use butter and brush some butter when these are done and that butter can have onion powder, garlic powder, spices, sesame seeds. Um, <laughs> Samantha is asking about empanadas. Um, yes, tonight I'm making empanadas, Samantha. <laughs> That should be for a different type of class to make all the dough and everything, but yeah. Oh, look, here it is, you see? Look, I started talking to you and look how fast this is done. So, this is it. You see? There, it starts popping up. And here it is. And there we have... Um, a couple of tortillas that I make talking to you. So imagine you can put, you can use, um, I'm going to show you. Um, what you can do is that if you have any bags, uh, <laughs> you want to make empanadas, okay. We can, we can try to schedule something to make empanadas. Um, okay, there, I, used to, I was going to be teaching at Gordon and I've been teaching at Gordon how to make empanadas. One of our uh, next workshops was going to be that one, but unfortunately that is something that now uh, we have to wait a little bit to do this um, with you at Gorton, but maybe I can talk to Gorton and see how we can schedule like some sort of maybe Zoom event to make empanadas if you want. In fact, um, well, to finish with the tortillas, what I do is like in this bag, I start putting the tortillas here and then I, I close it and I seal it. I leave it in my countertop for some minutes and then I take it to the refrigerator. If you want to keep them there, uh, of course they're going to last more when you have them in the refrigerator and um, that's how you are going to be able to, and you can frozen them, but I mean, I don't imagine like this would last a lot but you can definitely uh, frozen them. If you're going to frozen them, what I like using, and again, this is probably not something to buy on a quarantine, but you can probably buy this on Amazon. But when I frozen things and I put them one on top of the other, I use this. Let me show you. But I have this wax, and this is super convenient when you frozen things because I like to put one thing, you know, each of the things that I make, I use a lot uh, of breaded beef that I make that is called Milanesa. And every time I make those things or even with uh, uh, meats or anything that I'm um, putting in the, in the fridge, I like these separators. So these are like patty walks and these are super convenient. Uh, maybe if you order now on Amazon, you will get them by May. I don't know, but a thousand come with them. So, okay. What brand is your pan you're using? Oh, okay. So this is a brand that it's from France that it's called the Bouillard. Uh, the Bouillard. Uh, these are uh, French pans and I have the ones that didn't have, um, um, I, I have them forever. I mean, these ones, I got them on Amazon too, um, about two year, a year ago. And then I also have the ones that are plain, only stainless steels with big walks, and they are amazing. I love them. So I totally recommend them. Um, let me see. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if, let me see, like pancakes, the first one always is the word, exactly, yes, the same happens to me, the first 
uh, batch of everything that you make at the beginning. It's like the pizzas. You make pizza, I use a stone. The first pizza, it's, it's, it's the worst. Um, if you have any questions, if you would like me to tell you, I don't know if you have anything in your, in your country that you would like to ask me, or if you would like me for another five minutes to tell you from my country, um, what I make, but as you see those, uh, tortillas, it's something that hopefully if you find flour, which is hard sometimes now uh it's something that you can make super fast and honestly i mean when you see the recipes and ingredients for what the tortilla has like the tortilla should be like this so definitely this is much healthier than buying tortillas at the supermarket um i see uh, several people who want the empanadas <laughs> Corn tortillas. I never make corn tortillas. Um, unfortunately, that it's something that I would have to learn to make. I am sorry. I I, I am not um, the person to help you with the corn tortillas, but I can I can try to learn. Um, do you have some suggestion for filling the tortillas? Okay. So first. One of them is for uh, breakfast or lunch. Um, if you have any, like, for example, any greens, um, avocado, um, ham, tomatoes. And what I like to use um, here I have is that um, I like to add, uh, unless you are dairy free, and for this I like Kite Hill, the brand Kite Hill as a sour cream. But I love um, to use light sour cream because it barely has um, any calories and it's already super fulfilling like when you're making any like for a dressing or to put, you know, uh, to help you with the, the filling of a tortilla or like anything that you're making. And then... Another thing that I like making is like I told you, like, uh, for example, for like type of Middle Eastern, like uh, Greek food, like if you have a chicken, for example, you can make chicken fajitas with this. And what you do is like even if you have frozen, like um, peppers with um, onions and then chicken. And you can fill the tortillas with that. And of course, if you have paprika coming, um, other spices, you put all that and you can use like tomatoes, uh, any veggies that you have. You can also make like some sort of like fish uh, fajitas too. If you have shrimps, for example, you can make this with shrimps, you can make a coleslaw. And add them to also if you have um, rice, you can also put rice into this. Um, you can make uh, with beans, um, you can add any beans on top. So, I mean, the, the options are endless. For example, yesterday I made curry and I have, I don't know if I have, still have those as leftovers, if my husband has them or not. But with that curry that I make, probably I could heat that and have that with, uh, with one of these tortillas, for example. You see, this is the curry that I made yesterday, and I can fill them with this. Um, do you have, okay, filling the tortilla. I was wondering if, if you have any ideas on how to make a great dessert with just the basics, flour, sugar, butter, and uh, milk. Okay. Uh, I can, Jamie, uh, most of um do you have for a great dessert like do you have for example uh apples i mean there are great apple cakes that you can make with that that they taste amazing and you can add that another thing um that you can make is if you have frozen um frozen um berries. no like frozen berries or like frozen fruits um you can mix all that with cinnamon with you can make um 
let me see. Well, yeah, my husband is ringing me, but you know what I'm probably what I'm talking about, like anything like that. And you can make biscuits with that. And then you can put it in the oven and you can have like a parfait like that. And I can I can give you the recipes with that if you want then um, to write me, write to Gordon or write to taste of write to myself, like to taste of real food on Instagram. And you can ask me those things. And if you want, I can try different recipes and I can share them for you to make them. Um, another thing that you can make with flour, sugar, butter is that you can make crepes. And if you have Nutella or, well, in Argentina, we do a lot of dulce de leche or ice cream, you can fill crepes with that or ricotta with whipped ricotta and lemon. Uh, those are other fun things that you can do. And if you're making crepes, to um, another thing that we do a lot is like we make uh, salty crepes in in Argentina and probably abroad in other countries they do that too that we fill them with ricotta or with beef or anything and then on top we put uh, tomato sauce or bechamel sauce and we put them in the oven and we have that so and then for dessert we have the crepes filled with something uh, sweet even fruits if you want whipped cream that is another thing um, have you tried sweet fillings or sweet tortillas? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, that I recall, I don't recall that. Do you recall if I ever? Do you remember if I ever do that, Navila? Uh, I have chocolate and apples. Perfect. So you can definitely make, or even you can make like a chocolate chip cookie um, cake too. But uh, I don't have. Uh, a recipe that I know by heart right now, but I can, you know, uh, think of different things and I will send them to you or during this weekend, uh, Jamie, I am going to be sharing some of those ideas with all your questions of things that maybe you can do with what you have here. This is making me hungry. Yes. <laughs> I am hungry too right now. So, um, Another thing that I use before finishing this, and I don't know if you have more questions, is that when I make, I do a lot of breaded um, chicken, breaded beef, breaded, um, breaded, uh, like breaded anything, but don't think that with that, I'm, I'm using a lot of uh, breadcrumbs like that. I wanted to show you that when I do like breaded chicken, because my son, of course, you have kids and you want them to eat what you're making, because if not, you have to make like a hundred of stuff. And I like using like when I do breadings, even with pork, you can do like the pork schnitzel or anything. I do a big batch of these things and I put them in the refrigerator. So when I don't know what to make, I have all these breaded um, meats that I make, that then I make with a starch, for example, and with a salad. That is very typical of what I make every day. But to make them a little bit more nutritious when I'm breading, and for breading, I mean like uh, having a slices of different meats or like chicken tenders or whatever you want. Uh, and then I use a little bit of flour uh, and you can use rice flour too. Someone asked me the other day. Uh, yes, you can use any flour there. Uh, eggs that are um, uh, mixed a little bit and uh, the breading part. For that, I like using whole wheat breadcrumbs. But another thing that I put and I have over here is like when I'm breading, I also like using seeds and oat bran. And I use that a lot because this is super high fiber. And this adds a lot of fiber to the beef that meats don't have fiber, okay? Of course, you can use eggplant if you want to make this um, vegetarian. And you can use that, that kind of veggies, okay? But this is something that I use a lot when I'm breading, which is like this oat bran because it has a lot of dietary fiber. And you can always use if you have like nuts and you crush them sesame seeds. I mean, that is something that I try to use um, a lot. But well, uh, we're going to be having another two sessions so far of this. So if you would like me for next Friday, that I'm also going to be here. And if you want to send some questions, I'm going to be sharing more of what I do with my pantry and the things that I have. 
And I am going to try to show you one feeling to make empanadas if you want for next uh, Friday. And I can tell you in advance what you should have if you want to make them at home that Friday. Is that something that um, are you interested to do? <laughs> empanadas? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Samantha, okay, next week I'm going to be making empanadas. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know if you have any more questions. Um, if you want, again, next week I'm going to be here again at 2, so you can think more in advance what you would like me to answer and give me some time and I can share your questions maybe with some proper answers uh, for next week, okay? So, well... Oh, everyone, empanadas. Okay, yes, I know you like empanadas. Okay, so thank you very much for... Um, joining me today and i hope that you make the uh, tortillas and i'm going to be sharing the recipe of them um later on my instagram which is a taste of real food and well thank you very much uh stay safe and see you next friday okay <laughs> thank you thank you very much bye bye